Hello, and thanks for checking out this video from Placing Culture, which along with various other tutorials is also located at placingculture.blogspot.com. My name is David Meek, I'm currently a doctoral candidate in the Anthropology Department at the University of Georgia. Through this blog, I try to provide some insights into how evolving cartographic technologies and methods are increasingly mediating our understanding of the myriad interrelations between culture and place. So this is the second uh, screen. This is the second screencast in a mini-series on creating time series in ArcGIS. If you're unsure as to what time series is or why you would want to create a time series, uh, why don't you go back and check out the previous screencast on creating time series uh, animations in ArcGIS and overview. This screencast is going to explore the preliminary stages in creating a time series animation. From my perspective, the most important step in creating a time series animation in ArcGIS is proper data formatting. The prerequisite for creating a time series animation is a data table that is capable of being spatially represented. If you're working in ArcGIS and you have shape files, you most likely already have some sort of data table already. And this would be in the form of, say, a, a database format uh, file, DBF4, or something like that. What you most likely have in your data table are various uh, columns for time, where each year is a different column. For a time series animation, however, you need to transpose those different uh, time columns. Back in ArcGIS, type in transpose into the search box and the transpose time fields tool will come up. So once you're in the transpose time fields tool, you'll start typing in the years. And the way it works is you type in the name of the field as it appears in the table, a space, and then the name you want it to represent the year. So this is X19, X980 space 1980. And you do that for however many fields you have. And then you uh, pick the output data, the output data location, and that needs to be within a personal geo database. So you need to create one of those in our catalog if you haven't already. And then you're just going to make sure that the time field names are how you'd like them. Time is an appropriate name, and that's what it's the default. And then the value field is what you want uh, to come along from the original table. So in our case, it's just some fictitious data, but you might have something you really want to show. So then we'll go back and we will add that transposed layer we just created. Let's open it up and take a look at it. And it's not organized yet, so we're just going to do an advanced sort. And then uh, we're going to sort by uh, the code first and then time and the value so that everything lines up correctly. And once uh, we've done this advanced sort, you can see, you can check, and we should have three values now for each for each uh, municipality. In other words, one value for each year, and you can see that we have that. So the transpose time field uh, tool worked correctly. Our next step is to make a query table. So we type in make query, and it brings up the make query table tool. So the make query table is going to to join the uh, layer that we just created, the transposed uh, data table, to the shape file. So we add both of those in, and then we go down and uh, we want to add a SQL expression. Now, if you're not familiar with SQL, don't be don't be too scared. This is a pretty easy one. All we're basically doing is saying that the uh, that the municipality code in our shape file is the same as the municipality code in the table that we just created, the transpose data field. So we add those two names and we find them in the uh, SQL expression uh, list and we put an equal sign between them and just indicating that one equals the other. And then we come down and we see this key fields uh, option. And this is important. We need to uh, indicate which fields we want to come along into the new shape file that we're creating. And so what we need to have is you need to have the object ID and uh, the link, the MS link, 
as well as the code from the original shape file and the code from the, the new shape field. As this is a time series animation, we also want to check to make sure that we're bringing along the time field and the value field from the transpose data table that we've just created. So we go ahead and we press OK. We can, go, we can see, similarly to before, that this created uh, the right number of fields for each for each municipality. So you can see we've got three fields, just as we had expected. And this is uh, within the query table. It creates this basically in-memory layer. So what we need to do now is we need to go to type in save to layer. So then we add in the query table that we uh, that we just created that should be in the memory and then type in a name uh, to export that as. So those are the steps necessary to format your data in order to create a time series. With your data formatted, you're now ready to create a time series animation. To learn about how to do this, check out the subsequent screencast in this mini-series on Step 2, How to Create a Time Series Animation. Thank you. My name is David Meek, and you can contact me at dmeek at uga.edu or visit Placing Culture at placingculture.blogspot.com for more videos and links. Thanks again.